Now, I know you guys are always out there in the West End doing lots of shopping. Any tips that you can give us for saving money? On Don't food, go. especially. Food. Food, yeah. Mm. Food. My favourite thing is to buy whole chickens and cut it up yourself. And if you don't need, if you only want the breast or mm. the legs, put the other in the freezer and when you've got a stack of them, just make a big stew or something. But it, and then you've got the bones for stock. Absolutely, but it's so much cheaper if you buy the whole chicken. Absolutely. What about you then, Rossi? Well, generally, I think um, buy cheap, buy twice. Yeah. That is, buy good quality and make it last. And like, the, like, I mean, not we're all in a hurry, but like your mother did, you know, mm. have a roast on Sunday, Monday, and then shepherd's pie or whatever. You know, buy the right stuff and then keep it going. You okay. never asked him. Oh, I don't know about that. That's <laughs> what <laughs> used to Stop do. It. We're always looking for tips, aren't we? That's what we did on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> We're always looking for ways know of, you know, saving the, the old pennies, aren't we, ladies and gentlemen? We've got two experts here today. Please welcome the first of them, lifestylist Jay Hunt. <laughs> Hi, Jay. Welcome. Nice welcome to meet to you. Come and meet Brian. Hello, Brian. How are you? Welcome to the Green Pepper now, Show. The whole tell us about lifestyle is what does that actually incorporate then? Well, it's really just working with people, you know, working out how we can be a bit more savvy with our money. Because mm. all of us, let's be honest, have got a few debts. Even you, Ainsley. Sure, you say, yeah, yeah. Well. I've got a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it's really just making sure that we can be savvy, where to spend, when to save, and just helping people sort of be a bit clever about that, really. Yeah, absolutely. You want to find out all about the do's and don'ts of shopping. This is the lady for it. But first, let's have a look in your bag. Okay. Okay, here That's we go. It. Oh, you're a bit frugal in the old shopping department. Then. Well, I'm quite careful, but mm. then I sort of will pull back in one bit and then go crazy in another. Absolutely. Day, so. I think that's human nature, yeah. really. Tell us what you've brought along here for us then, Jay. Well, I've bought this because mm. I really like cabbage. I mm. quite like the taste, but I like it because it just looks really stylish. Mm. Is that mm. a bad reason to no, pick it? No, I, it's I think quite there's every pretty. reason. It's savoy cabbage. It just looks good on the shelf. I know, shelf, and it? I think it's underrated. Yeah. Gruyere cheese, I bought because I don't really like cheese. I don't like good, that's smelly, good idea. Yeah, good cheese, thinking, yeah. But that's a nice cheese. Mm -hmm. And a pork chop. Because you hate pork. No, I like pork. <laughs> right. You think it looks pretty? <laughs> I like it. I, like it I think it's underrated. I think everybody goes for chicken. And I'd like to know how you can make pork chop really exciting. And how much did you spend along with the potato, onion and pepper? There, I spent Jay? exactly £3.50. There you go. Wow, well, we're talking at budget bag today, guys. I know you normally associate Ready, Steady, Cook with £5.750 or even the gourmet bag for a tenner. Budget bag, three fifty. Are you happy with that, chef? No. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> That's what I call lifestyle. Like yeah, absolutely. The well, we're talking about saving the pennies today, and here's the man that really knows how to save those pennies. Please welcome money saving expert Martin Lewis. <laughs> So tell us, money-saving expert, is it as easy, is it as simple as Jay says, or is it a lot more complicated trying to find ways of saving money? I'm at the rabid end of money-saving. Mm. What I'm all about is saying we spend our lives with companies trying to take our cash. Yeah. I want to show you, not about cutting back, not about mm. changing your life, but how to take those guys on, stop them taking your cash and take it back for you. I'll give you a stat, dead yeah. easy. The average person in this country, mm -hmm. by taking a day off to sort out their finances, not saying stop having your cappuccino, could give themselves a 27% pay rise. Wow. 27%. Wow. One day, sort your cash out. There you Hallelujah. go, guys. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right, 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 and yes. lots more information coming your way. Stay tuned. Let's have a look at your bag. Right, in the bag. Okay. What have we got? Well, first thing I wanted to yeah, show you. Good old show it out. Yeah. Oh, well, there we are. I've got me mushy peas here. Oh. <laughs> now, I'm a good northern boy. I love mushy peas. I buy yeah. them all the time. And I thought it'd be a really nice to fit them in with all these other things that make no sense with it whatsoever. So, it's a challenge for you. It's a challenge is good. Yeah. I reckon you're up to it. Salmon. Yeah. Sushi is my big treat. Mm. I love my fish and I love my raw fish. So salmon there, some udon Japanese noodles. You're starting mm. to get a theme. Salmon, raw fish, udon Japanese noodles. Mushy yeah, it's our show, love. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You're going <laughs> to... <laughs> we'll do the food, all right. Do you know what? I come here... <laughs> You give me my money, I, I, you know, I want a free lunch and yeah, I've got to yeah, be able yeah, to eat whatever. it at the end. What are you going to give me? Come give us on. A call. There we are. How much did you spend, Martin? £3.49. Oh, already saved a penny there, there mate. Oh, oh, right. yeah. Very good indeed. You, I'm sure, are going to get on famous with Ross. Have a little chat. But first, let's find out what Jay's going to get from Brian. Uh, well, uh, we're going to make uh, some kind of cabbage soup, because we've got bags mm. of cabbage. Mm. We're going to try and cut this in half that way, sorry, so we'll then panny that in um, breadcrumbs, cheese, a few herbs, fry that with a, an egg on top. We'll do the other half, we'll bash out and we'll just uh, grill that and use some pepper sauce. We'll make a, we've got the cabbage, we'll use a bit of 
sauerkraut, so we'll just half an onion and in there. Uh, and then I've got some spare potato. I'll make a potato roast. Perhaps I can make two little potato dishes. Lovely. That'd be Ooh. very nice. Does yeah, that sound good that to you? sounds great. Really okay, great. right up J yeah. Street. Let's go over and find out what Ross is going to do for Martin. Well, I have to say, Martin didn't know, but I can't eat peanuts. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I, no, I can't touch them. So <laughs> okay. If Brian would be so kind, he's going to be half a cabbage for those. Oh, I don't know would about he, that. Would he be, oh. so Are you prepared to, to swap because he, he's allergic to peanuts? Can I change what I'm doing then? Of course you, well, you can. Do I'm making you want, peanut mate. soup now, not cabbage soup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this obviously says Japan. So, so very quickly, we're going to do some tartaki on. If we mm. get the cabbage, a cabbage base. We'll do some uh, mushroom yakitori, uh, a salmon udon broth, and we're going to make mushy pea tempura. Oh, watch this space. Watch this space indeed. From a tin of mushy <laughs> peas, sound good? Oh, I'm not surprised you're <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah, okay, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, you've heard what our experts have come up with. You're going to hear a lot more from our experts in the money department very shortly. Not before I say, ready, steady, cook. Okay, okay yeah. up and Head running. Off, Away yeah. we go. Brian's going to take his pork chop, divide it into two. One's going to be panned down with the old grillé cheese, some nice herbs. The other one's going to be grilled and served with a nice red pepper sauce. We've got a different type of soup coming along your way. A bit down the old sort of Eastern European theme, I think, we're talking about a cabbage soup. He said he's going to put peanuts in there. That's going to be interesting. Two different types of potato. Let's find out about this side. Well, you've heard about uh, Ross with the old broth that's going to include the noodles and some of the salmon's going to lay on the top of the cabbage too. The mushrooms in a very Japanese-style udon noodles. We're talking Asia. Asia comes to the Red Tomato Kitchen. But first, let's start off with our chef, Brian Turner. Find out all about the old pork chop. Is this the type of pork that you should buy? Remember, we're dealing with a budget bag today, ladies and gentlemen, £3.50. What about that pork chop? Does that look good value it to you, chef? It looks all right to me, does that? I have to say yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it'd be really nice, slow cooked. I'm going to take Lovely. the rind off. I've got to be careful talking not to talk too much. You've got a very sharp knife here. What I'm going to try and do, if I can... And what about that fat? Is it good to keep the fat on there for flavour? Perfect. You don't have a toned body like mine if you don't oh. eat that kind of fat, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Oh, Sorry. lovely, lovely, lovely. It didn't have the lid bit on it. Yeah. Sorry? It didn't well, have... Put your hand over the top. Put your hand on now. it, love. Put your hand on it. That's what you want to do. Put your hand on it. <laughs> now, Chef, uh, you're talking about a lovely little flex of fat going through your pork. And that really does introduce loads of flavour in the cooking. If you it? do this at home, you wouldn't normally do this at home. I'm just going to try and get an extra dish out here, that's all. So please be careful. It's a sharp knife, is that? And I think we probably... Yeah, You've done gonna... a really good job. What a nice man you are. Carry on, Chef. And I'm going to keep that on the bone, so mm -hmm. we'll make it look like you've got a nice pork chop there. So just to do that, I'm going to trim off in there, okay. Jay. this little yeah, bit here. Blitz in. Really get those bread crumbs down. And there clean up. That's it, love. Clean up that end so you can see it's got a bone in it. So you've now got a thin pork chop. OK. With a cleaned... Nice clean bone there. Bone there. And that will really make it attractive to serve, won't it? And that will grill and serve perhaps with a bit of pepper sauce. Right, okay, okay so. Lovely. That's okay now. Let's get this cabbage out of the way, otherwise oh. we'll be in trouble here. Here we are, Jay. Put a bit of bread, okay. bread crumb and then out there. That'll Just be fine, that. my love. That's okay. And then we also have a little bit rusticky, but is that all right for you, chef, those breadcrumbs like that? It could probably do have been a little bit fine. No, that'd be enough, thanks. Why don't you just pull us back a little bit more? Sorry, a little bit finer. Just a small quantity. We want to put this pork chop into it. that on there. Lock that all the way round. That's it. Just leave that there and that's it. Get rid of those. Pass the butter out as you're over there, Ian. Sorry, chef? Pass the butter out as you're over there, Okay, butter, indeed. OK, one lump of butter. And you want some eggs whipped up, flour, egg and bread crumb? That'd be wonderful, chef. What a nice man you are. All right, then. OK, so that's going to go in for the now, soup. Right, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's yeah. the best it's going to get, isn't it? It's so quite coarse, the old bread Soup here, as well. So. There we are, my love. That's OK. A nice rustic one, that'll make it nice. I'll put this down here for you. I don't know if you're going to need it again. You can crack no, a, probably not. Crack a cup, uh, 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 an egg. How one many egg, do think. you want, I think Jack? Probably one will be enough. One? Oh, yeah, two, please, yeah, two. OK, there you go. Let's got put right, some chef. peanuts Tell in there, so we've got the... OK, so we've got a peanut and cabbage soup. Oh, I'm going to upset you now. Can you do that in the machine? Can you blitz those and we'll mix those in? We might as well. We've got to use these peanuts. Okay. So we've got to... Okay. 
OK, All right. right. So I'll come back and see you. Thanks for sharing us that. Fine. Thank you. All right. Now, remember, we've got a bit of a Japanese theme uh, going here with Chef Ross Burden. So we're finding out what he's going to do. He's already started poaching off a little bit of salmon. He's got a... Well, that's, that's our stock. That's going to be our udon chef. stock. And, you okay. know, in, in Asia, like, again, it's money-saving, actually. Waste yeah. nothing. Everything that's got flavour, keep it with flavour. Ah, lovely. All right, then. Good little tip there. So we've got all the skin and everything that we just pot deposited it's that in there. It's all got flavour. I mean, uh, in Bangkok, there are noodle bars that have had the same pot of boiling stock for, like, 35 years. So just really? top it up and keep it going. And you lose none of the flavour. Wow. You know, flavour, Brian, that's the thing you have in food often. <laughs> oh, they're having a bit of a go. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, go on, my the son. <laughs> They're he only knows because he read it in a book. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right, tell us what we're doing, Chef. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to uh, herb this slightly. We're going to do something called tartaki. I don't think we've done tartaki before. Tartaki is just basically seared fish. Rather than being raw, like yeah. sushi or sashimi, it's just very, very quickly um, seared. And have, it's going to have that brownness on the outside and then be raw in the middle. It just has a little round. But Was it anything to do with the quality of the fish? Whilst you're, are you going to be serving this raw, then? No, that's going in the broth. Um, OK. Well, I, well the, the, the honest truth is I don't know where the fish came from. OK. And that's a very good point there, ladies and gentlemen. And t tell us why. I know, but tell everybody why, Ross. Well, because, you know, if you eat raw fish, and raw fish is, is, is delicious, and I very much like raw fish, but you have to know exactly how fresh it is. And yeah. because I don't know where it's been and what, what's happened to it, I'd like to have a little bit of, okay. of, of cooking going on. So. Lovely. OK, looking for a job here. You've already... Uh, what have you done here? This is the uh, uh, mushy peas. Uh, we, need some, we need some chopped up garlic in chopped there as well. You're bored by your feet. There you go, mate. That's okay. all right. Let's get you going. Let's mushy get you organised. Mushy peas and the breadcrumbs in there. Don't ask me why. I'm just doing what I'm doing. And, and an egg and some garlic and some herbs. Mm -hmm. We're going to make little sort of... Um, the whole point of... OK, Asian... 14 minutes. Sorry, Ross. Come the whole on. point of Asian food is to have balance. We're going to have crunchy and hot, cold, um, soft, ah. wet, dry. So we're going to get the whole sort of um, flavour sensation going on OK. There. And where do you want the garlic going, Chef? The garlic's going into the same mixture. We're going to make little um, fritters of those. OK, mate, there you go. A couple of cloves of garlic there. You can get right stuck into that. Very good indeed. Mmm. So the tartaki just needs a couple of seconds. Mm. I know people at home are thinking, ooh, raw fish, not, not keen. But yeah. actually, it lets all the flavour go out. It's fantastic. I love the way it's seared. And look at that, it's almost gone black. It's like seaweed on top of that salmon. And you don't have to cook it for very long, do you? Well, no, it's, it's, I mean, I'd rather not eat that raw, because I don't know where it's come from. But, yeah. um, you know, it's OK to be raw-ish. And I think people overcook fish far mm. too much. You know, mm. want to keep it nice and, and fresh and Absolutely. juicy. Absolutely. Good point there. Good point. Hey, and it, what's the old tips on shopping then, for you, as far as you're concerned, Martin? Food shopping. Yeah. Food shopping. I tell you, one of the big problems for me about food shopping is I think we have all been hypnotised into spending more than we need to. Mm. Right, you go into a typical supermarket and there's four brand levels. There's the finest brand level, there's the normal brand level, there's own brand and the savers. And gradually over the time they say, tell you what, try our finest. Yeah, you might like the salmon finest, but the beef finest was made in a different factory. And there's no reason that we escalate. So this is what I tell everyone to do. Mm. And the, the numbers are amazing. One time you go shopping, take your normal shopping trolley, but try one brand level lower at everything. Have a guess how much that'll save you on your shopping bill. Oh, I don't know. Five pounds or something? 30%. 30% oh, yeah. off your shopping bill. Then, try it. If you notice the difference... Go back. Go back. If you don't notice the difference, stick with it. Most people, and I've done mm. this countless times on lots of different programmes, only notice the difference on half the stuff. 15% cut on the shopping bill. Average person, average family, £5,000 a year on shopping. That's a £750 saving and you don't notice the difference there, yeah. in your pocket out of the supermarket. There you go. That's a holiday. That's a holiday there, Simple ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it really is. And we've got lots more to come <laughs> from Martin very, very soon. Thanks for that, Martin. Years of telling people to buy better food. <laughs> Down I'm, the drain. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's try it. Yeah, try. If it's not different... <laughs> if it's not what you want, OK. It's their pre-packaged stuff that you don't want to go for. The keep best chopping, quality is different. Chopping, 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 Fantastic. We'll come back and talk to you again. And we've also got Jay Hunt down here, ladies and gentlemen, who's a shopping expert. And we've got our chef, Brian Turner, who's going to be doing wonderful things with his uh, pork chop. Remember, this is a budget bag. We only had £3.50 to spend. And the chefs have got to create some fantastic dishes out of that. So let's see how they're getting on. What are we doing at the moment, then, chef? We're making some potatoes for Roshti. Wow, we've got look the at that cheese crust ready. There. We've got the crust ready to go. We don't need that mm. just yet. I'm making some sauerkraut over here. Okay. Stuart, I've got the soup on here. I got the potatoes coming this on here. This one, yeah. Chef. yeah. This one I'm grating. The big on. one, yes, please. Yeah. A... I've just Look grated at that. my thumb. Beautiful. Did you just grate yeah. your thumb? Oh no. But it's okay. Are you all right? Nice and slowly does it, Jay. Nice and slow. <laughs> all right. How did you make that sauerkraut then, Chef? 
Okay. I've just okay. got uh, sliced onions, shredded cab cabbage, shredded onions, and I've got some white wine in there. there you I'm go. going to put some. Uh, that gives you an idea. All that is is just cabbage and few onions cumin that he's seeds. Cook down. Keep, keep going. Keep it put it in there. What's yeah. it there? That's it. And really allow that to cook. Stew that away in there. Okay then. Fantastic. All Let's right, put a chicken stock door. cube and some vinegar. Okay, and, and this, this, is your, this is your pea, pea and cabbage soup, isn't yeah, it, Yeah, and they got a stock in there to give it some flavour. Okay, a little bit of stock, a little bit of water, allow that to cook down. A bit of white wine vinegar there, so it's sort mm. of a sour soup. Okay, just It'd a be touch wonderful, of that. Wonderful, that. And do you like that combination of the cabbage with the vinegar? Then is that why? Oh you do yeah, that? I love it. It's great. I'm a great vinegar fan. It just gives everything that little bit of a, a zing. of a lift. Absolutely. Okay. Let's put these uh, in tell here. us about this. This is just a wonderful colour. Check this out, guys. Look at that. That's the peanuts, herbs, and everything that the chef has just blitzed down. I don't quite know what he's going to be using for that. I'm oh, going to put that round the um, round the pork in a minute. Okay, that's going to go round the pork. Won't and that's take going long to get pan fried. That won't take long. Right now, what about the potatoes? Okay, just past They're halfway here. now, guys. Potatoes here. Thank you. Okay, we've got some grated potato. We're going to make a little bit of a, a rosti, I believe. Yeah. All oh, right. Left the skin on it. Oh, lovely. You don't get rid of all that mm. juice. Don't need that juice in Tell there. Tell me, Jay, is there ever a good time to go clothes shopping then? Not on a Saturday with your best mate. Ah. You don't want to be doing all that Why ambling that? around. You've got mm. to concentrate. If you yeah. want to go out there and get bargains and get good things, you've got to concentrate. Most people are better on their own. So I always say. Go early on in the week yeah. when nobody else is going. That's when you get really good stuff. And, and you're you guaranteed to perhaps get a better choice too, because uh, yeah. you, know, Saturday, you sometimes go in there and you know you often hear my sister goes out. I didn't have it in my size. Well, it's the end of, of the week, yeah. so everything's some gone. Some mm -hmm. chit chatting. That's good girl. Great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Flower. And uh, what and what about sort of people making money with their old clothes? Because a lot of the time, you know, you look in your wardrobe. They're things that you know, and men and women they don't wear, and they think so. Well, I can't really justify going out and spending another. <laughs> 50 quid. Well, I think also it's, it's about recycling. I mean, all the internet auction sites, people now, you know, you just take photographs, people will buy anything. So mm. you can put them on the site, get money for it, and then if you're spending that money to buy new things, it somehow mm. feels OK. You don't sure. feel guilty about sure. that. But you can actually get rid of your old clothes, sell them all on, the, on, on some of these websites. Yeah, and if you haven't got a computer and you haven't got a camera and you think, oh, I haven't got a clue how people do this, yeah. there's all these places now springing up on the high street where you can take your stuff down to them. They will take quite a hefty commission, but they'll do all the photographs and everything What's for hefty? you. What's hefty? 50, 60%? 20 to 30. 20 to 30%. So it's, uh, well, you're talking about 10. It's going to yeah. be three quid. It's as simple as that. You you can work out the mess for yourself. But you'd everybody. rather have seven quid, wouldn't you, than something sitting there that you're never, Absolutely. never going to wear again? Absolutely. Okay, let's have a quick check and see how our chef's okay, getting on. Okay, we've got on the here. rosti on. We've got rosti. I got the potatoes here. Can I have some of that grated cheese, please? Uh, yeah. Here we are. We'll put some of that. So we've got these. What type of potatoes are these then, Chef? These are probably King Edward's or Maris. Yeah. <laughs> Is that it's... not the question you're asking? Uh, no, well... Oh, silly me. <laughs> right, here, Chef. Here we are, Chef. Bit of black pepper. Oh, so this is black pepper. I like black pepper. I'm allergic to black pepper. Get out of here. You're allergic <laughs> to black pepper. Do you want to trade pepper. black pepper back? Yeah, oh, there we are. Bit of pepper right. on top so of the old so Very nice. Soup's too. coming on fine. Right, now we're going to just pan here this. Okay. It's been through the flour. I've kept the bone on for a bit of presentation here. So we've got peanuts, we've got coriander, we've got um, breadcrumbs, and we've got a bit of cheese in there. Right, now just sprinkle it over the top. white right. wine for you. Do you want a glass of wine, Jay? Not thank you for me, Chef. I'm oh, really busy. I'm all right, actually. I've got okay, a case of the tray. Where's the white wine? Have you took the white wine? Yeah, we've got the rusty because of the cooking down there. Here we are, Chef, with some white wine. I'll leave that there for you to Thank moisten you, everything. We've also got seven minutes to go. We've got another bit of pork here, which the chef is going to be using in some way. We'll find out how that's all happening when I come back. But first, let's go over to Ross here. He's taken that's just fine. all of the ingredients. You can remember all the bits of salmon, all the mushrooms, uh, mus everything. All that's a nonsense. Creating a lovely exactly. broth, a really good exactly. stock. Exactly. And what are you going to hit that with now then, chef? Well, just when it comes back, I'm going to poach mm. the noodles. The noodles are quite thin. They're almost mm. cooked, but they need a little bit longer. Sure. We're obviously going to put salmon. We're going to build that up in the... In the um, in the, in the bowl. We've got the... Uh, now, this is... this is I made a uh, sesame. It's very traditional Japanese sesame dressing. Mm -hmm. Sesame seeds ground up, little garlic, little oil, little right. lemon, salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like a mayonnaise, but it has a very nutty sort Could of flavour. Could you use tahini then, or must you... Perfect. Put... Absolutely okay. perfect. Tahini's yep. the thing. That Absolutely. is a kind of a, a, a sesame seed paste, paste. guys. And okay. it's so good. It's very good for you. Full of zinc. It's absolutely okay. brilliant stuff. Brilliant. Good tip there, I've Chef. Got, I've got Martin marinated my mushrooms here. That's mm -hmm. in a teriyaki glaze, which is going to go into the grill shortly. Mm -hmm. We're doing very well here, mate. So tell us about the old internet that 
Martin? Is it a good yeah. way of saving money? Can you get on there and find out all sorts of useful bits of information? If you're on it, it's the key. The problem with the internet is who you trust. You know, don't confuse the delivery mechanism with what you're getting. If you're going to shop somewhere that you know, great. I mean, I have my website, and that's all about showing people how to save money. Sure. You know, million people a month now using it because people are starting to realise there's so much information you can access. Money saving expert by dot, dot sure. com, by the way, I yeah. should say that. But shopping on the internet as well. Mm. Don't be confused into thinking it's always the cheapest way to do it on the internet. Yeah. This is what I say to you. Go to a shopping comparison service, Price Runner, Deal mm. Time, Kelku. Sure. Put in what you want to buy. It will search the internet for you, find you the cheapest. You can either then buy it on the internet or print it out. Big tip here. Print it out, go into a normal shop, say, this is the internet price. Will you match it? Put your thumb over the delivery cost so they don't see. <laughs> <laughs> this is the internet price. Will you match it? You'd be surprised. Dixon's Comic Curry's, the whole lot of them, they may well match it. If not, go buy it on the internet. Sure. But use it as a tool. But tell me something. Yeah. It's all well and good you saying that a lot of people feel insecure about going on the internet because they're thinking, I want to know that if something goes wrong with my TV, I can go back to a shop and I can see someone that, that sold me that TV. The biggest internet sites these days are the ones John Lewis Online mm. is huge. It's all about who you trust. If you go through those shopping comparison right. services, or my website for that matter, and you therefore you're using someone that's automatically recommended. Those shopping services only deal with legitimate retailers. Great. But of course, there's always a cost for getting it cheaper. But listen, if you're talking 20% cheaper on a £1,000 plasma telly, your type of thing, I'd suspect. You're talking a holiday, 200 yeah. quid, yeah. go for it. Or oh, a very nice meal at Brian Turner's restaurant. That's right, what I'd more than say. 200 quid, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's 0207. Um, can, 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 uh, can I ask you, do you ever shop on the internet? I, I'm, uh, there is an, um, an internet um, mm. shopping channel, if you like, that's the best way to site, yeah. um, that I'm a bit addicted to, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I do, absolutely. I buy everything from jeans to shoes to yeah. all sorts of... I've been... I've been I was going to say it's another word, but I've yeah. been um, done over once yeah. and in 400, in 400 transactions, so it's, yeah. it's, it really is quite safe. I'll tell okay. you what's more dangerous. More dangerous is when you give your card to someone in a restaurant, you let them take it away and they can write down your credit card number. That's a lot scarier than the I internet. Know. There, there I is, know. People don't think that. Is, don't let it out of your sight. There's, there's also, there's also a service for, yeah. for, for people who pay by this internet auction site, right. which means that they have your number and, and, the, and the merchant doesn't. So you can, ah, you, there's, okay. a, there's another way of doing it. Yeah. So. Right. OK, now the only reason I'm moving out of your eye line there, Brossy, is just to see what's going on here. Tell us a little bit about well, these. Well, that's how much you pee fritters, yeah. and I'm rather hoping they're going to stick together. You oh, did put an egg in, didn't you? What's that? You put an egg in, didn't you? You never told me to put the egg I in. I did twice, actually, but that's... OK, so, no, then. That's a no, that's uh, fine, that's fine. <laughs> fingers crossed, audience. Fingers crossed, <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Mate. Everybody, yeah, listen, our entire audience, ladies and gentlemen, eggs got their overrated. fingers crossed. Yeah, who needs eggs? You know. His uh, uh, <laughs> mushy pea bargies <laughs> are going to hold up. <laughs> All right, we've got the udon noodles. Briefly, before I go back to Brian, tell us about the old udon noodles. I've only got but, three minutes to go, by okay, the way. OK, they are wheat-based, not rice-based, um, and they're, they're basically sort of cooked by the time you get them. You just want to warm, warm them through. Rather than just being really thin noodles, you just pour the stock over. OK. Although I'm th going to pour the stock over the herbs and vegetables and stuff. And just look here, give you an idea. This is what Ross is talking about. He's going to be pouring his herb, his lovely broth. Remember all that lovely flavour from the mushrooms and the salmon went in there? He's got the fresh salmon, he's got a little bit of cabbage, onion and some herbs. And all of that will cook, guys. OK, the fish is cut so small, that broth is going to be Don't so hot, off, as soon as Get it hits, off. it's going to cook down there. We've got the mushrooms there looking good too. Okay. Everything's looking fantastic. Come back and see Super. in a moment. Thank you very much. Very briefly, let's hit back down here. Pepper sauce, Chef, how's that come along? It's coming along great, Chef. <laughs> great, so we've got a pepper sauce and a bit of tomato puree, did you no, want there? No, some have... tomato ketchup. Ketchup, good, yeah. yeah. Ketchup going in there. Uh... A bit of double cream. OK, we've got some double cream. And remember, these are the type of things that you have at home. You know, all tomato ketchup is the reduction of the tomatoes and vinegar, a little bit of sugar, and it's all cooked down. Yes, at one or two secret ingredients. We've got two minutes to go, guys, two minutes. All right, right. then. That's going to go on there. When you've done that, mm. put it all in there, OK? Oh, Lovely. Okay. Come on, then, Jay, quick I'm few... actually doing really complicated things I know. Here, what about it? a few money-saving tips when we go out, then? Hit us with a couple of those. Well, the thing is, is that people are always obsessed about what time they eat. Yeah. You know, if you ring and book, and book a table at a restaurant, everybody wants 8.30. And really, if you think about it, you've got to think about, you know, utilising places that have happy hour, places sure. that do pre-theatre menus, you know, could you face eating a bit later? Those are the sorts of things. If you're not getting out with the crowd and yeah, everything else... Yeah, it is. And yeah, if you're going out in a group... One and a half. Yeah. If you're going out in a group of people, the amount of people who are all sitting in cabs and things, wasting their money, when if you're going out with a group of friends, you know, why not two or three of you? 
all get just together. going in the cab. It's just little things Simple like things that. that. It's just breaking really habits. About, though, Jay, it's just you habits. Know. I know, it really is. Have and you got a spare Of course, you can find out lots of useful information. Both of these guys have got their websites up there, guys. But first of all, oh, we're talking really? about the food. And the food is really the most important thing because we're dealing with the last minute of Ready, Steady, Cook now. Our chefs are running around. The pork is just going in there. The egg's just been fried. Will it happen in time? You'll have to wait and see. Cheesy potatoes out of the oven. The broth has suddenly come alive. All those lovely dishes, delicious salmon dishes. 40 seconds! Audience, just to remind you, um, you are voting some, for yeah, what the chefs did with the ingredients they're given. Start thinking about that. Uh, OK, will they get all this stuff out in time? 30 seconds to go now. Chef Turdo's rushing around like mad. We've got our little rusty coming out of the oven. OK, glass of wine. Let's go over here. Let's pull this out. 20 seconds to go. OK, where do you want your rusty, Chef? Is it all right? Mm, I'll find Will out. Go on there. Here we go. Then. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, six five, five, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Stop! Quickly! It's just going to be all right. I think it's right to get that out there. Here we are, Chef. I'm going to go up the middle here. You have to finish that off. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Chefs rushing around frantically, and why not? But what did they start with? Well, Brian Turner had a pork chop, a large potato, a cabbage, Gruyere cheese, a red pepper and an onion, whilst Ross Burden started off with a large darn of salmon, udon noodles, a tin of mushy peas, some mushroom peanuts exchanged for half a cabbage, and a red onion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our experts are absolutely delighted because our experts, our chefs, have come up with some really nice dishes. Uh, Jay, you pick up your cutlery and have a bit of a go mm. of everything. What are you going to call this then, Chef? Well, given what we had and who we've got, you pepper rush for the bargains if you're a chopperholic. Oh! Yeah. You're right, yeah. it's rubbish, eh? Very nice indeed. And what did you do with all your ingredients? Mm. Well, is that nice? We you see, about... that is not only nice, but it looks so stylish and it's a pretty colour. Mm. So extra points there, I think, okay. for making okay. it look pretty. Very we did, nice. of course, utilise this two Cheesy kilo tutties. bag of peanuts that we were landed with. Mm. <laughs> so we've now got here a, a sweet and sour peanut... It was a cabbage soup, it became mm. a peanut and cabbage soup. Yeah. It's fantastic, lovely, I have to say it's good. Uh, we've got sauerkraut mm. over here, it's got a bit of vinegar, a bit of white wine, uh, onions and cabbage stew together, a few cumin seeds in a baked uh, pepper. pepper. This we pan in that wonderful uh, pepper. We'd have been in trouble if we hadn't had the peanuts, you know. Yeah. The peanuts, the cheese, the bread comes here. A few fried onions and a couple of fried eggs last minute. This was just quickly grilled. Pepper sauce, mm. uh, half the pepper with uh, tomato ketchup, bit of double cream, bit of wine, uh, gratin potatoes, a little roasty. It didn't come out, but don't worry mm. about it. It comes out when you eat it, so just serve it in the pan. Mm. And right. here, these are little soya rolls, yeah. just soya pancakes with a bit of egg, soya sauce, cheese and peanuts rolled up. And the danger, of course, if you're allergic, allergic to peanuts, don't come over this side. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think overall? I don't Jay? want them to come over this side because it's so delicious. I don't want to share it. Thank OK, you, <laughs> well, you carry on eating. Fantastic. She's absolutely delighted with Brian, as you will be too, Martin, with Ross's effort. You get stuck in. What are you going to call this, Chef? Uh, well, uh, given it was only £3.50, for a Japanese meal, we're going to call it um, Fishing for Compliments is Mushy Peasy. <laughs> 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 yeah, you made that. Yeah. Nice. Just the ones. Even with no egg. <laughs> it's this is, I tell you what, this really is good value. Mm. £3.49 for this. It's absolutely superb. The taste is incredible. I know you've got it all really these lovely... I love Tell mushy us what you did. Look mm. at that. It's okay, full we, of we, lovely flavour. We only had one darn of salmon. Of so salmon we, we, took, we took one, one bit of salmon. We were going to do a tartar, but in fact, it was so little it turned out to be cooked anyway. Yeah. On the sesame-dressed Japanese um, slaw, if you like. We did mm -hmm. ta um, uh, teriyaki mushrooms, made the, made, made the fritters and mushy peas and udon noodle broth. So we've got wet and dry hot, cold, sour, fresh. It's perf perfect Asian food. Good combination mm. there. And overall, what do you think, Martin? Far better to eat than to talk. That's how good it is. OK, oh, that's superb. brilliant. All right, well, everyone's delighted, ladies and gentlemen, but who are our audience delighted with? Is it the green peppers or the red tomatoes? Let's find out as we ask them all to please vote now. And up they go, and look at this. I've got to say, this is exceptionally close. But would you believe there is one more? Red yeah! tomato! <laughs> oh, wow. Fantastic. There you go. Yay! Congratulations there, Martin. Brilliant £100 spending Thank money there for much. you.
And if you're very, very careful, that could be worth £130 in no time at all. Absolutely. Well, Do this is going to go to Recycle, a charity I support, I think, oh, this that's one. That's fantastic. That's you. How nice go. of him, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, fantastic. And in a year, it'll be worth £1.4 <laughs> times <laughs> the yard. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, Jay, you saw how close that was. Oh, One was in it, my love. But, uh, I know. We've got a lovely Ready City Cook ham for you to take home with you. Thank All you. All sorts of lovely goodies in there. And perhaps I could throw Brian in there too. Would you like that? Yeah, why not? Yeah, take him Something out. Something for the weekend. Why not? Why not? Oh, lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Jeff. Yep. Always a pleasure. Come and join us, boys. Okay, They're okay, busy nattering. We've on, got man. work to do. It's called the Quickie Bag. Let's say a very big thank you to our guests, Jay Hunt and Martin Lewis. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Yes, I promised you more food. Oh, I think there's a little jar in here. We do have to be ever so careful. And there it is. We've got the Morello cherries and syrup, eh? You sure it's not oh, beetroot? Oh, no, it does look a bit <laughs> like beetroot, doesn't it? Uh, uh, cooking chocolate pieces, gentlemen. Very interesting. Some uh, hazelnuts. They like chocolate. Oh, I know. There's a chocolate thing going on. There's a bit of nuts going on here too, Ross. <laughs> oh, no. And uh, we've got some Madeira. Just we've the way got... you're standing. <laughs> Apricots. <laughs> And uh, we've got hazelnuts, Madeira cake, and a bit of quark, too. Well, there you are. I have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what our chefs are going to come up with. And, of course, guess who gets first bite of the cherry? Yeah. We'll do some hot cherry jubilee. We have with it, hot cherries in, in red wine. We'll do a little, uh, a little trifle with the quark, the apricots, the cherries, and lots of cream. Mm -hmm. We will do a chocolate and peanut sauce to go on uh, to go with our apricots mm -hmm. and then we will probably uh, hang on for that and see what else we're going to do. All right then, something will come to mind but uh, that's our Chef Brian's offer. What about you? It's quite a lot of chocolate isn't it? Okay. Mm. Um, chocolate cherry cheesecake, um, apricot cobbler and praline biscuits. Mmm, okay, that's very nice. Actually, Florentines, we'll make Florentines. Yeah, make some yeah, Florentines, Florentines too. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, nice little selection of ideas there. I think the cobbler got a few of us, so people in the audience going, what's that? Hey, we'll have to find out if they vote for Ross. What's it going to be? Green peppers, red tomatoes? Oh, please, once again, vote now. And up they go. Oh, well done, Ross. Oh, oh. And it looks... Like Ross, well done, <laughs> they right. want to see or find out <laughs> see what my a cobbler is. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get cooking. <laughs> okay, your ten minutes cooking time, chef starts now. now. Let's do okay, it. Okay, well, I'm going to do, the, I'm gonna do the, the cobbler straight away. Okay, if you'd like to toast that. the nuts and give them some flavour, do the more. Okay. Would, you, would you like to be so kind as to do the cheesecake? That sounds good. Play, right. play with that. That'd be super. I, well, can I do something else oh, with that? that? Yeah. Whatever you like, mate. That'd be great. Okay, lovely. Right, get those nuts toasting off there. It really does intensify the flavour. It's really, really worthwhile. I know, absolutely. Good. Take some mm. of now, do you like the old Sorry. quark then? I mean, I know you've handed it over to Brian, but is it something that you perhaps might use in cooking? Oh, that's, that's one of those incredibly bland things, which is, you know, there for, there for the using, basically. Yeah. I'll just get these started in here, then I'll come out and uh, pop them on the top. Just give them a quick uh, blast there. OK. Cos I've just got a feeling that bowl's well, just a little bit cold. Ten, ten minutes is a little bit, <laughs> okay. you know. And what about your apricots? A little wine to kind of moisten yeah, them? Yeah, please, yeah. A little, a little brown sugar, I think. Um, a vanilla bean. A little bit of nutmeg or cinnamon, perhaps? OK, Maybe yeah. Sort of, oh, I know we'll we've come out of Christmas, but we want yeah. a little bit of sort of festive mm. cheer in these cold months. Mm-hmm. OK, just moisten with a little bit of wine. Hit with a little wine there. We've got a touch right. of uh, nutmeg and some sugar. vanilla bean. OK, chef, Bit on the way. Sugar. Great old vanilla bean. One's already split there. Smells just divine. That's oh, the cutbacks, then. That's it, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can't... <laughs> you, know, you don't know what you're going to find in it, Ross, these days, do you? <laughs> That's OK. And good old nutmeg, ladies and gentlemen. What can I say about this, uh, this you know, beautiful the spice? It's lovely. Generally used to carry around um, nutmeg graters with a nutmeg in it. Yeah. Because they used to use it as we use pepper now. It's just so, it's just so aromatic, isn't it? It's just got a wonderful taste flavour to it. OK. There you go. Right, we've started that bowl and just started to heat up now. We've got the water there boiling, so that's that really going to get that that's, going. That's brilliant, actually. He's just heating your bowl like that. Brilliant. Here we go. Just to get that going. OK, what else can we do? Okay. Uh, Chef's busy with this sponge. Uh, uh, are we doing...? Well, 
Mm. I, when those are done and, and whatever, I thought I'd make mm. Florentine. Oh, some caramel, mate, would be, would be superb. OK, a little bit One of caramel. caramel. I don't know if we've got time, but the like, Florentines, I don't know if anybody at home knows, but they're, they're basically sort of um, very posh biscuits, which are all glacé fruit and, and nuts and, and what have you, um, set in caramel and then dipped in chocolate, which is very, very dec decadent and mm -hmm. rather lovely, actually. So. OK. And so easily uh, done in three minutes. And, and so nothing when you're making the caramel, minutes. guys. <laughs> a little tip about when you're making the caramel, don't touch putting water into it. People put sugar and water, you've got to wait for the water to evaporate. Just sugar straight into the pan. Well, it's sort of the cheats method, isn't it? So if, you're, if, you're not, if you're worried about how it's going to go. So I think if, you, if you're a little bit sort of, you know, if you know, if you know how to cook a little bit, then you can probably do it quite, quite easily without. OK. Chocolate's just beginning to melt down now, Chef. That's now, really normally a car would be circles. I'm doing triangles because I didn't... Have time to find a okay. cutter. Frankly. Seven minutes. So just get those. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. We're just, just that's hot, mate. Don't, don't. Um... Okay. Straight into the oven. Yep. Anything on top? The icing, sugar, or something. No, like we'll do that? that when they come out. I think these will cook quite nicely. Okay. Do you know scones were the first thing I learned to cook when I was a kid? Ah, and you haven't forgotten. And I haven't forgotten. There you go. Well done. Thank you very much. All right then. Super. Lovely. What about you, Brian? What's the first thing you learned to cook as, as a child? A bacon sandwich. Uh, <laughs> a what? A bacon sandwich at my dad's cafe. Yeah. Yeah, no, we did all bacon, sausage, egg, sandwiches. Mm. All without a safety net. Oh, lovely. And what about baking bread and stuff like that? I used to do it in the, uh, mm. what was it, what, <laughs> what they call it, um, in the scouts. Yeah. Uh, without, uh, without... Cubs. Yeah, well, in the, yeah, scouts. Yeah. Are, yeah. yeah. I can't remember what we call it now. It was in black and white then, of course. Yeah. It I was used definitely to, uh, in black and white. I, I think quite right, was those tiny little fairy cakes. I absolutely loved them because it was just such, such a way to show off. And I'm sure kids are doing that now. And you know what? Once you, once you learn how to do something like that, and especially when people offer you compliments, you want to go back and cook even more and more and more. So start off with something really simple. Don't get too complicated, guys. And it really makes all the difference. You know, so I work with, a, with a, a group that Brian's also worked with, I'm sure you have as well, called Focus mm. on Food. And we, oh, yeah. We, we get kids to cook. And the look on their face and they realise that actually it's not very difficult. Yeah. And, and that they can do this stuff. It's just fantastic. Mm. It, it's absolutely brilliant. I think getting kids to cook, you know, it's about knowing where food comes from, what it does. They're looking brilliant. Yeah. I might splash a bit more in there. Yeah, I've got, um, bit, I've got a bit more wine here. Okay, cool. Um, getting them to know what we're... And, and not be scared by it, I think, is absolutely wonderful, mm, you know. Mm, mm. Really How just got, lift their spirit. Uh, about five and a half minutes, Chef. I've got the quickie question coming out any second now. Yeah. Our chocolate is melting I'm, I'm, perfectly. I'm like, I'm like, if you, yeah, if you, you do, do those, I'll, I'll rub them. All right, I'm just putting up Thank you very much. There. there you Super. go, my Thank man. You. All right. Fantastic. You do have to toast those. You can do them in a dry frying pan, ladies and gentlemen, or pop them onto a tray in the oven and just look what happens here when he takes this off. OK. <laughs> uh -huh. Chef, uh, Brian Turner, you're probably going to know about this, Brian. You certainly, you know, I remember when I was training, Brian was really, you know, a, a big, big chef and knew all about these type of things. And this is the question today. He's running up and white... down. He's paying no attention. Have you attention. got any white wine anywhere? Uh, white How wine, yes, Chef. Here we are. Oh, thanks, thanks, Chef. There we are. And this yes. comes from uh, Holly Rolf. It's from Isha in Surrey. And mm. Holly says this afternoon, I own a substantial collection of copper pans and platters and love the look of them when they're shining and gleaming. They get a lot of use and I'd want to know, oh, because they get rather dull and tarnished, I want to know the best way of bringing back the shine. The best way of bringing back the shine... To copper. ..is to try and revive a, a kitchen porter called Yorkie that I used to know. <laughs> <Yeah. long> gone. <laughs> And Yorkie you looked after them, and what you use is you use salt, mm -hmm. vinegar, flour, in probably equal proportions, and make a pomade. Yeah. And you just brush that uh, over the top, wash it off in cold water, and dry them off. And I tell you what, it's wonderful. Okay. And uh, chef, for and those... if you want to sell them, wherever you are, I'll buy them. I've got a collection. They're very good. Remembering, of course, you can't cook with copper. And Remember, you a... can cook with copper pans. You can't. Yeah, but, but, they have to be but, tinned inside. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 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 okay, a promade. Okay, and basically what you're doing is Brian is absolutely right. It's one of the reasons I asked him. And um, the old days in the kitchens, ladies and gentlemen. Certainly, when I was, you know, chef, all the copper pans you'd hang up there. You used to have to pull them off, and the only way of bringing them back because we couldn't afford to go out and buy all those expensive sort of cleaners to bring them back, make them nice and shiny. The flour, and you put in a quantity of salt too to get that grain. So you've got the smoothness of the flour. Then the whole thing is mixed with vinegar, like a malt vinegar, so you get a paste. And you just rub that 
onto your copper pans and that will all come off. There's loads of different things out there, Holly, but well, it just, really is just up yeah, to you. Yeah, the, the salt's really just there for, for um, abrasiveness. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. just abrasive. And any of those proprietary things you buy at the supermarket have got acid in them and, and you know, um, vinegar is an acid. Here we are, Chef. I've got a bit of... Do you want a bit of a dollop of vanilla? Uh, uh, sorry, yoghurt on that's that. That's going to have the... the um, the, the scones on them, how are they okay, doing? They're doing lovely. very well. They're doing well. The, we're now, gonna, what about your okay, cheesecake? The, the, Flor the Florentines are, have, go. aren't going to, we don't have enough time, so I'm going to make a Florentine mousse instead. Okay. So, as uh, with this fantastic looking chocolate, I have to say, it looks absolutely brilliant. It does, it's really has it done, done it's a really proud, high, chocolate. high quality cocoa and, and high yeah. percentage of cocoa. And there's oh, now okay. a huge movement towards having um, responsible, you know, fair trade cocoa. So okay, have a look at that then, guys. You can see so that. It should really be chopped nuts and fruit and, and, and caramel, but it's going to be chopped nuts, fruit, caramel, chocolate mousse and caramel. Oh, yum! Right now, there's lots of lovely flavours there. I think I'm going to have to cool that down, Chef, just to slow okay, that. OK, it really is going a bit, yeah. bit over. Well done, thank That's you very much. going a little bit fast. In order to cool that down, if you're making anything like this, pan of water, that's OK. Burnt, just burnt caramel makes fantastic ice cream. That's going to cool that down a little delicious. bit and slow that caramel but right down if you're anything making else, caramel. Anything else is a bit grim. OK. What about that cheesecake, Chef? Show us your cheesecake. Tell yep. us how you did it. Cheesecake is just quark and double cream. I've got some spinach at, spinach at <laughs> home. <laughs> and I've got some cherries underneath there. Where the hell does spinach come from? <laughs> OK, spinach then. Plants, Lovely. Mate. Can you get that on there, Chef? OK. I'll do my best. I actually, and I actually put a bit of white wine in the sponge just to make it nice and... Oh, How are we doing for time, I Jeff? could make a cup of tea here the way this is going, guys. OK, you've got one minute to go. Wipe the inside of that. Our biscuits, our little scones are looking good. I've sprinkled a little bit of sugar on those. OK, I wonder if we could just have a... Uh, that's it. I'm going to put a chocolate on just top of a few of those there, Chef, chef just to see whether that's going to nestle in there. Oh, it's going to be brulee. Whoa. Chocolate mix oh. brulee. brulee. Here we are. Slightly Lord, melted chocolate. How delicious! How oh. delicious! Is that the brulee on top of there? It's like a caramel. Yeah, exactly. And you have to go through the sugar. Just going to wipe. How, how are our doodars doing? Okay, beautiful. They'll be out there, okay, Chef. There'll be 40 they... seconds. Leo, lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, fine. Okay, slightly melted bits of chocolate on the top of them. Great, well done. Some of them. So we've got slightly little chocolate rings on top of those. Beautiful. And we're just going to pop these around the edge there of our plates, our little scones. Mm. Oh, they have brulee. Well done. Yeah. Fantastic. There we are. I know that chocolate is looking rather nice around there, isn't it? And some plain ones too. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Well done, all sorts of lovely food here. Thank you very much indeed, Chef. What are you going to call this, Ross? Uh, hang on, we had um, we had the cake. Which, um, frankly, Madeira. This would cheer up anybody. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> all right, what did you do, Chef? Tell us. <laughs> and what in course, what uh, Brian did? Come across and join us, Chef. Uh, we, we cooked the apricots and plumped them up, and they, the dried apricots are fantastic like that. And we made a cobbler. The idea was, mm. obviously, we didn't have time to make real mm. cobbler, so we, we've, we've, we've done the, the chocolate moist, um, scones there. Lovely and moist. Uh, we made a mm. chocolate Florentine mousse with a... With a um, it should be quite so hard, oh. a, quite a... Oh, yeah. look at that. Brulee top mm -hmm. um, with, with the other extra biscuits. And then Brian... We've just got mulled cherries, a bit of cinnamon, a bit of orange juice, with red wine, a bit of lemon juice in there, grilled, bread, grilled Madeira cake. Topping of a bit of cream, and then we've got the quark mixed with cream here. We've got cherries in there, got white wine here, cherries on top there, which we've covered over with the mint, but you can't mm. see, you can see, we know they're there. Mm, mm, mm. I love the idea of these sort of little scony things that you've got here. Well, if some don't, first... don't make them too thick, they'll, they'll cook in time. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and they're and nice you were quite and light. Right, putting chocolate on them is a great idea. Mmm. And you can sort of run down it's because we like look, having it nice and gooey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you missed any of the recipe on today's programme or any recipes on any Ready City Cook programme, you can go to our website. That's bbc.co.uk forward slash food or check out CFAX. It's there for you. Use it from all of us until next time. Take care. Bye bye. See ya. <laughs>